Hello Wargamers, Invasive Ramnus here, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about the process I go through when I'm painting my uh, crisis suits for my Tau Empire army. Now this is a subject that a lot of people have requested a video on, and um, so today I'm basically going to go through step by step uh, the process I go through when painting these guys. Now you've seen this color scheme and pretty much all my videos uh, on different models so you do have an idea of how versatile the color scheme can be and its application to models beyond the crisis suit uh, as you can see here but uh, mostly I think when people are, are requesting uh, you know a painting video they're talking about the crisis suits now uh, if you want to see videos on other models I can definitely do that um, but today we're just going to be talking about the crisis suit particularly the Crisis Commander. Um, this is the guy that I have uh, showed, you get, showed you a few times, but uh, here's a good head-on picture of him, uh, sporting a, a lovely flamer. But uh, yeah, so the first thing we got to do is decide how we're going to prime the model. And you have a couple options. You could go black, gray, white are, are generally what people prime with. Um, you could go with um, like an army painter red which is going to you know have a slightly brighter color in the end. Uh, it's going to make your reds pop a little bit more. But uh, if we're talking about just the three the three uh, basic colors, black, gray, and white, I use black. Um, and the reason for that is because I want my my models to have kind of a heavier feel. Uh, I want the reds to be rich. I want the everything to kind of just have a nice, almost sultry uh, feeling to it. And uh, I think the black primer uh, really brings that out in this model. If you go with a gray or white, you're going to have a little bit lighter type of uh, model that's going to feel lighter. Um, and uh, you're also going to have to be very thorough with your paint. Um, white and gray primer have the disadvantage over black in that uh, they're very unforgiving if you miss any little nooks and crannies because with a black primer if you don't paint over a, a, a recessed area that is only primed it you can pass it off as a shadow whereas if you prime it in white or gray you have this you know big white thing sticking out at you um, and so that that's really hard to to uh, pass off as a shadow obviously because it, it's so light so for those reasons I prime my models in black um, the next thing you're going to want to do is figure out um, what colors you're going to base so you're going to want to uh, prime the model and then put all your base colors on the model before you do any type of layering or anything like that and for um, each of the different colors. These are the, the paints I use. For gray areas, I use dried bark or any type of dark brown will, will work. Um, for the metallic areas, I also use dried bark. For the black areas, I clearly use black. Um, it wouldn't make a lot of sense to use anything else. Um, but for the red, which is clearly the dominant color, uh, there I ha you have a couple options. And um, I've used uh, various paints in the past um, before GW came out with their foundation paints, or, or now the base paints, I used uh, dark brown. So uh, on the right you can see a piranha based in dryad bark, or you know whatever the, the earlier version of that was. And on the left you can see a model uh, based using uh, Mephiston red, or whatever, or whatever the red foundation paint was. And so you can really see um, a difference between the models in that um, the one based in brown is still clearly red, but it has a much darker um, tone to it, whereas the one that's based in Mephiston red, the, the red pops a lot more. Um, and so it really is it's just up to you as to which one you like better. Um, but other than that, all the colors on, on these two are the same. So that gives you a good comparison and shows you why choosing your base paints is an important step. Moving on to uh, the actual layer paints, uh, once you have everything based, I typically paint the red first uh, just because it is the dominant color. Um, 
I start off with a layer of WASDOC red, which uh, is the equivalent of red gore. So in some of my comments, you've seen me mention that I paint it with red gore. WASDOC red is the, the contemporary red gore, and so you could use that. Then I go over all these um, little recesses with uh, null and oil. So I take a really thin brush and just line um, these crevices with with null and oil and let that dry. Once that dry, once that's dry, I clean up any type of uh, excess around the the edges of those plates with another layer of Wasdaka red. So you get um, these really clean lines of of black in the recessed areas, and then I highlight it with Evil Sun Scarlet, uh, which is the equivalent of blood red, and then. Uh, you know, if there's any areas that I really want to pick out, I um, highlight, it, highlight that up with mixtures of Evil Sun Scarlet and uh, White Scar. Now, um, you'll notice when I do highlight these plates, I highlight only one edge of the plate. So, uh, for these like plates, it's the top, the top plate. Is highlighted and I find that that kind of gives it a little bit more of a scaled appearance whereas if I were to highlight both the top and bottom plate uh, on either side of that that black line it would just be too much and so having just this subtle difference between the top and the bottom of the plate um, gives it a nice a nice look in my opinion so that's that's um really something that that I like about about this technique and I think it's something that is worth noting um, for the gray areas, um, you'll notice I have uh, two different shades of gray. I have darker gray areas, which um, cover most of most of the gray patches on a model, and then I have light gray patches, um, which I use for um, commander heads and and um, anything that that I want to kind of draw special attention to. Um, so for the dark gray areas, I start off with um, a layer of Dawnstone, which is the old Codex gray, and then uh, again for the recessed areas, a layer of Nuln Oil, which is cleaned up with the secondary layer of Dawnstone, and then I highlight that up with Adam, Administratum gray, which is uh, the, the new Fortress gray. Um, for the light gray areas, it's kind of just uh, the, whole, the same process shifted over one um, in the color range. So I start off with a layer of administratum gray, do the recessed areas with null oil, clean that up with the administratum gray, and then uh, highlight that up with progressive mixtures of gray and white scar. For the black areas, I, uh, after I start off with a layer of eschen gray, then cover the surface completely with non oil. So not just the recessed areas, the entire black area. I throw a nice layer of non oil on, and then highlight that with Dawnstone. I don't go back and and do anything with uh, eschen gray really. I just go straight to highlighting with Dawnstone. And um, for all my sensor areas, so. Um, Anything that I want to have kind of have like a optical optical look, I uh, paint green. I want it to be like kind of like a green lens, um, and for that I use a base of Caliban green or uh, Dark Angels green, and then highlight that up progressively with um, mixtures of Caliban green and White Scar. Um, and you'll see there's lots of videos on how to do this type of gem effect, but basically if it's a circle you kind of make um, progressively smaller crescents within that circle with your lighter colors and then throw a, a dot, a white dot, uh, up at the, tar at the top of the circle where the light is supposed to be penetrating the lens. Um, uh, and so that's how I do my my lens effects. Uh, I really like the contrast of the green against the red. I think it looks real nice and uh, has a nice pop to it. Uh, for the metallic areas, uh, very straightforward. I throw a layer of warp block bronze or the new tin bits. Um, throw uh, a layer of null oil on top of that and then highlight it up with uh, Sycorax browns. Um, which is a new paint, which uh, really made uh, 
highlighting tin bits a lot easier. And again, you see a lot of people do um, gold colors with Tau, but I think, uh, especially for red-based armies, uh, having that nice brown, bronzy look uh, really looks nice, and so that's why I, I go with this um, darker color. Um, I think it, it, it melds a lot nicer with the red. All right, so thanks for watching. Uh, this is just another another angle of uh, the model, so it gives you an idea of what colors go where. But um, if you want to see me go over uh, similar paint schemes with different models, uh, let me know. Uh, and thank you for watching, and uh, happy wargaming.